making something without having a plan, a concept, a script or anything. What could possibly go wrong? Everything. Sometimes I have a strange craving, that is, watching anime. My very favorite anime, anime, whatever, uh, is Violet Evergarden because... Gosh, I cry every time. <laughs> I wasn't directly in the mood for Violet, so I looked on Netflix. I stumbled upon an anime that I decided not to watch again and again. <laughs> Until now. Lost Song. What can I say? It is overly dramatic, has a very unfortunate forbidden love story, songs, and oh my gosh, sign me up. And yes, I know it is totally cliche, but sometimes I like to watch just something without thinking too much about it. The anime has so much packed into it, like time travel and drama. <laughs> so much drama. Still, I enjoyed it quite a lot. I thought about making one of the main characters, Lady Finnis, she has long grey hair, a completely unpractical, nearly unimpossible dress. Of course I had to make her. <laughs> she is so over the top that she is cool again. <laughs> the only thing I didn't really like was how deep her neckline was. I raised it slightly for my recreation, but let's face it, she isn't the most obnoxious character when it comes to this area. We have another one, Pony. I loved her. She is cool and funny and everything, but I, I have no experience, but that looks very painful and like it would hurt quite a lot. Anyway, I decided to make Lady Finnis and... <sighs> Everything that could go wrong, went wrong. <laughs> First problem, what kind of doll? I went through my box of dolls that I have for repaints and none of them were quite the right fit. I decided not to do her. And then I rewatched Lost Song one day later and was again like, I want to make a doll out of her and yeah. Then I went back to my box and I found a body. I found a hat, which I ordered from Japan ages ago and thought, ah, with some shading, maybe you can get her into the right direction. And then I went through my hair box. Here we are with the next problem. There was a time when I decided, a oh, why buy fancy doll hair? Buy extensions, buy cheap wigs, buy everything you get and just try it with this before spending that much money for hair. And then I ordered doll hair for the first time and didn't want to go back to my cheap hair roots. But with England leaving the EU, the only doll hair supplier that I could order from is quite expensive now when it comes to shipping. So I decided to try it again with what I had. She got a combination out of a cheap wig and extensions that were far more expensive than the cheap wig. <sighs> Went quite well, the reroute was a success. We come to the problems later. I rerouted her and I took my time, parted everything that should be parted and tried to stitch the hairline as accur accurate as possible. Then I wrapped her up in some fabric, gave her two sprays with MSC and started the repaint. Remember I said that I wanted to alter her face shape with shading. That was the moment when I noticed the original doesn't have a lot of shading. The original doesn't have a lot of details. 
what a surprise when you work from a manga or anime figure. They typically are quite stylized. So I wasn't sure what to do. I tried to give her a little bit shading at the sides and then just go with the eyes. I couldn't resist at least dabbing a hint of depth onto her lids, but yeah. Altogether, the repaint is, I would say, the simplest one I ever made and the least impressive one. <laughs> I was not happy with her. I thought she still looked cute, but I n already noticed they are definitely not sisters, not even cousins. Maybe, maybe their mother's hairdressers were related. That is the closest to a relation that we can get for the two. Other than both are human. But I continued, because I thought maybe when I cut her bangs, it will come together. So I so I boil washed her and everything looked great. The hair was laying down quite smoothly. I started to cut the bangs and everything was standing into every direction. Then I thought, why not use the hairdryer? Yeah, that made it worse. Her bangs started to lifting in every direction. <laughs> But I was eager to get this done, so I took out my straightening iron. That obviously didn't work because my straightening iron is far too huge for these teeny tiny bangs. So I run down into the kitchen, took out a butter knife, came back, heated that thing up and tried to get her bangs lay flat with this. That worked quite well. In the end, I heated up my knife, put down her bangs with the knife, then took out my hair dryer, put it on the coolest setting and tried to get the hair in place with it. It was halfway decent. I tried to wrap her into some aluminium foil afterwards. That didn't do anything. <laughs> so I took out some glue and combed it slightly into her bangs. With that problem out of the way, her dangly bits at the side were the next problem. I tried to glue them down as well and when this didn't work, I decided to just leave her, let her be as she was, dried her hair, put her hair into a ponytail, and everything was, let's say, halfway decent. Now we come to the dress. And because I thought, ah, the repaint and the hairdressing and everything will be enough on camera, and I can still do some steps on camera, I made everything off camera because the struggle was real again. Normally I do all the seams that can be done with the sewing machine with the sewing machine. This time I made everything by hand. And with three layers alone in the skirt, that was a lot of hand sewing. That didn't go smoothly. <laughs> Who would have thought? <laughs> Let's start with what you can already see. I stitched together a bodice out of white fabric with quite prominent curbs for this area. I know that you know what I mean, but I don't know how much I can talk about this area without YouTube saying, go away. You have to live with this area. <laughs> which is quite more strange than just saying what it is. The cups for her breast area were quite interesting to do. I had to give uh, her two darts because of the size of the breasts of the doll. And then I uh, made under bust corset and stitched the cups onto it. Then I turned everything inside out, put it on her, took out some fabric glue and put down two layers of it to stiffen everything up and to help everything stay in place because especially with the deep back line 
back neckline. Neck back line. I hope you know what I mean. The cups in the front wouldn't stay in place, so I had to stiffen everything. I tried to sew in some wire in the center. That didn't do that much. So I took out the glue and then turned it back to the outside, which was quite fiddly, but it worked. Then I could put it onto the doll and at this point I wasn't willing to stitch everything, embroider everything on her sleeves, her, on her gloves and um, her top. So I took out some yellow acrylic paint and some silver fabric paint and just painted it on because the skirt was already done. And oh my gosh, this skirt. You have three visible layers. The first one is more or less tulip shaped, but has a lot of ruffles and wrinkles at the bottom. So my conclusion was to make a three quarter circle and gather it at the bottom with a running stitch. And I put in a piece of pink fabric that I ruffled up quite a lot and at the edges between the pink fabric and the white fabric I put these yeah coils of uh, fabric that I secured with some fabric glue <sighs> when I was done with this and I just looked at the skirt and draped the two other layers over it especially when I just draped the other pink layer over it I'm not sure if you see what I see, but it reminded me of another word I can't say on YouTube. Let's say a, a female private parts. And now I can't unsee it anymore, <laughs> even in the, uh, in the anime, which makes watching it quite interesting. After I had all the layers stitched on top of each other and under each other and around each other and whatever. When I looked at everything together, I thought at least the dress looks more similar to the original than the hat. So the hats may be quite distant relatives, but the dresses could be cousins. So yay, one thing that worked. Then I put her hat onto her body and I think she looks cute, I do like her, but still, nothing like the original. I feel I immensely failed on recreating her. And every time I look at her, I think either buying a new hat and starting again, just keeping the dress, leaving her like she is, or just taking the hat I have and give her a bit more shading. I don't know at the moment. If I will change anything on her, I will inform you about it. But at the moment, I decided to just let her be. I decided to show her anyways, because I thought, let's make her a reminder for me that it is okay to not get everything right. And that something you do can look different from the thing you had in your mind. It's fine anyways. And to acknowledge that you put in a lot of effort and work. That is something I want to remember. Because normally I am very picky with my work of arts or however you would you will call it. I always have something where I say, yeah, that is wrong and that is wrong and that is wrong and that is wrong. But overall, I'm fine with it. Most of my dolls are not perfect, but I like them. Princess Peach, for example. I'm fine with her. Sally wasn't even planned to look like the original Sally. Emily worked quite nice, could be improved. The doll for the Squid Game video. Mmm! She's fine, but could be improved also. And even my original designs, when I look at them, there is always something that could be improved. And sometimes you may have a doll that you look at and think miles away from what I originally wanted. Still, it is okay. And it is also okay to make mistakes. Why don't be a little bit more gentle with myself? And on this, uh, this note, 
I will leave you for today. I hope you have an awesome time and we will see us in another video. Bye for now.